So welcome everyone. Jairade. So yesterday we started with this wonderful, wonderful verses about Lord Chaitanya. Why Golda became because why honey became Golda? And we started with the first reason about the deep, deep, deep reason, deep background why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came not to only save the world as the Yuga Avatar, but also for his very personal, intimate, confidential reasons. We will continue today. Uh, it, will, it, was, it, it is now coming into the second reason, and I just want to make a quick, short recap so we can catch up with the, where we have left off. So first of all, it is Krishna who wants to taste uh, Shrimati Radhika's position. Because he does not have any access to the depth of her love. She's always the object, he's always the receiver. Now he wants to feel how it is that he becomes the subject that he is giving, you know, taking up this role of one who is giving love, Ashraya. And in that general desire that comes to smaller and detailed desire, because through that he can also relish his sweetness, how Srimad Radhika relishes his sweetness, and that is how we continue to do. So we continue at verse 134. <clears throat> My mind races to taste the pleasure experienced by the abode but I cannot taste it even by my best efforts. How may I taste it? <clears throat> if sometime I can be the abode of that love, only then may I taste its joy. Thinking in this way, Lord Krishna was curious to taste that love. His eager desire for that love increasingly blazed in his heart. That is one desire. Now please hear of another. Seeing his own beauty, Lord Krishna began to consider My sweetness is wonderful infinite and full. No one in the three worlds can find its limits. <coughs> Only Radhika, by the strength of her love, tastes all the nectar of my sweetness. Although here in the Krishna's mind 
the art actually how he's very eager taste his own sweetness and for that he needs he cannot do it alone he cannot stand in front of the mirror and stand and taste his own sweetness to the fullness he can say yes such a sweet personality I see such a beautiful personality <coughs> but to taste this sweetness he needs another one who is completely in love with him who completely has focused his heart on him and he or she who knows inner parts of his heart so the only solution how he can taste the sweetness is again to become someone who loves him the most so we should just enter in that need which is appears in Krishna's heart and he in the first reason he understand I want to taste her feelings of love towards me but now I want to taste how she feels my sweetness how she is melting when she is meditating on me where she is singing my name, where she is embracing me, when she is kissing me, when she is giving me all amorous opportunities to give me a pleasure. So this second reason is a little bit more subtle and than the first one. Because usually we want to know the feelings of others towards us. But this reason is more subtle because it's a pure love. And the sweetness is present in the pure love. So to taste the sweetness of someone it means that that person who will, who is tasting this sweetness must be very, very, very confidential associate to understand and to feel the differences between feelings and sweetness. In one point, the feelings and sweetness are not different because people, person who is sweet she has so, or he has so many feelings, and because of that, he's a very sweet and so kind, and so on and so on. But to taste this particular feeling, because the sweetness is also feeling, which is it is also the sign of feeling. So this is a deeper desire of Krishna than the first one. I just want to say this. <laughs> Although Radha's love is pure, like a mirror, its purity increases at every moment. Oh, I want to add something. How is it possible? 
Krishna does not understand how Shimati Radhika's love is so unlimited. This increasing, this unlimited swelling. He can feel in her. And he's so astonished about that. And he, he thinks, what it is in me that makes me love as well so much and grow. That is this desire that <coughs> that will really go diving deep. And it's so interesting that for diving so deep he has to <coughs> this position. As the big enjoy. So in a way, also Krishna is giving us an example. If we really want to go dive deep in service of Srimati Radhika, Gurudev in Vaishnavas, we also have to give up our own position as thinking, I know how it goes. Because usually Krishna, he is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. All enchanting. He's got it all, he would say. He is the topmost Lord. But suddenly, in the love of Srimati Radhika, he realizes I don't know anything. I'm, I'm a foreigner. This is not something that I can understand without the mercy of Srimati I need her blessings. I need her guidance and assistance so that I can go deeper in miracles of prayer. So we also follow Krishna. We give up our ego position of thinking, I know what to do. I know how to live. I know what love is. I got everything in control. But we take shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is showing the way of love. Not only for Krishna, but he makes all living entities conscious. This is the reason why his name or her name, Gorangi's name, is Jay Dan. To make all living entities conscious of his love. That is the special blessing of today. And diving deep, like Krishna wanted to dive deep. And she wanted Radhika's love and understanding himself more even through her love. So also for all of us, this is possible today. We take deep, deep shelter of this merciful Chaitanya who gives the mercy of consciousness that is filled with love and that is able, thus able to serve Srimati Radhika and go in the spiritual body, in the spiritual world and live also here a very deep life of unexpected surprise. Because Krishna also was surprised. When he tried to realize it, he became very surprised. 
<laughs> and that is already something to make Krishna surprise. So we'll have to speak about that too. <laughs> we will be very surprised today and every day. <laughs> So, Smriti is very deep, you know, uh, nicely described. I think Prabhupada explained <coughs> Chaitanya's glories. I forgot the year, maybe 1967, probably, or 8. And uh, I think Prabhupada gave very nice lecture. And then, how he explained what is Chaitanya Charitamrita? So, Chaitanya means consciousness. So, soul has consciousness. <laughs> but if we, have, we think we are material body, then it seems we have consciousness. But actually, our consciousness is like uh, sleeping. So Mahaprabhu came, wake up our consciousness. So we are spirit soul. This is Gurudev saying, this is Gopi Baba. But the Mahaprabhu was more explained. Just I remember Suniti is now sharing. And Krishna Lila. Uh, many gopi want Krishna as their husband, each person. They play Katyani Brata. So they kind of some Brata, they say eat very simple food and pray. Oh, let Krishna be my husband. Mm. One day, Gopi went to Yamuna River mm. and then bathing. Mm. At that time, we just cross. Mm. Generally speaking, if we want to bathe Yamuna mm. or Radha Punda, is without cross is not good. Is not good attitude. So generally speaking, they 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 cover their selves. So at that time Krishna said, Oh, you are you are bathing without cross. But uh, you are really, you are covering really take off, or you have covering? I want to check you. And then Krishna steals the cross. Then Krishna said, if you want to cross back, you come one by one. Your hand should be like this. <laughs> Up. Because, you know, lady or even man does not want to show off private parts. So, generally speaking, in a great kind of cover. But the Krishna orders go. You are bathing in, in, in naked. I know your desire. You want to me as husband. I am checking you. You have ego or not. And then Gopi was very much digesting. <coughs> Actually, Kachani Burata is like uh, almost after Kartik means almost December. Very cold. Very cold season. So Gopi does not want to get out, but staying water 
is cold water is also a problem. So finally Gopi decided, okay, I'll give up. I follow your instruction. Then Gopi is like kind of, you know, follow Krishna's words. And then they kind of, you know, hand is up and show the private part and get closer. That good day will show us, give up for sake. <clears throat> then, after that, real Lila start. Rasa Lila, Anza Lila start. Then, Krishna was, you know, thinking, Oh my God. Actually, uh, it seems I have no ego. But it seems I may not have enough love like Radhika. Actually, I want to understand Radhika's love or Gopi's love. Radhika's love I cannot <coughs> Then Krishna realized, oh, okay, I have to give up my ego, so called ego. I'm enjoyer, I'm master, kind of this Suniti say, this kind of, kind of Vishaya mentality. I'm enjoying. But if we thinking I'm supreme person, I'm enjoyer, then we cannot taste love, prema. Highest love we cannot taste. <laughs> so Radhika was, uh, no, uh, Krishna was thinking. Okay, I give up this ego, I'm enjoying. I will take shelter in a position of servant, the kind of Vishaya. No, sorry. I shall, I, Ashuraya. So I give up my ego and then I surrender to Ashuraya Tattva. Real Ashuraya is radical. Means accepting the position of servant. Then how to get this position? I have to follow the feeling. Let me steal Radhika's Baba. Let me steal Radhika's bodily power. Inside, outside, okay, try to follow Radhika. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not only consciousness, but also still Radhika's mood. But Radhika's mood. <coughs> It's difficult to steal, difficult to understand. So to understand reality, it has to be position of manjari. Means made sadam, made servant of radical. Because they are really servant of Ashura uh, uh, so then Mahaprabhu actually steals the radical mood, but actually following Manjari's path. Because if we don't take position of Manjari, made servant radical, really Krishna does not understand. So therefore, Chaitanya means not only consciousness, consciousness of 
blood and feeding means consciousness made servant of another life. So, in that sense, Mahaprabhu given to us no other age, no avatar, no even devotee does not share this feeling. This is amazing feeling. And this feeling is always increasing. This is called the Babo Urasa Lati. So we are very fortunate to, to understand this kind of uh, feeling and this kind of reality. This is coming from by the mercy of our Guru Dev and the Guru So, yes, I Okay. I'm contemplating about his golden effusions. It is always pointed out, his golden effulgence, the effulgence of molten gold, bright as a rising sun, molten gold, shining, and which would be somewhere in Vandara. It is it, as if you could see it, but not with your eyes. It's another perception. And when there is this this bright golden fulgence, simultaneously there is a sound. <laughs> Sweet, only a frequency. And this is golden effulgence. Simultaneously, there would be a fragrance. A fragrance so fresh, so pure. And you would immediately know but not with your brain knowing. Mm. Knowing this is the truth. And you would, your heart would beat strong. And your breathing would get deep and voluminous. And from your stomach there would be a warmth. And there is this golden effulgence. And all this perceptions would be there simultaneously and the jiva in us would resonate there is ex this exchange and it is simultaneously a process of ascending and descending meeting meeting in my heart and there would be no question of ego of body because then the jiva would blooming would be there and and it, this is kripa this would be such so pure and this is love and what else you can do is to serve this love this is this is the fighting of mold gold. Very nice. <coughs> just, just to add, so beautiful. Uh, just, just to tell you that there is one book. It's called 
I don't know full name, but Chaitanya, the diaries of Mahadeva, and one lady, I cannot remember the name. They were the contemporaries, contemporaries of uh, Goranga. And there are stories how when he was coming to their village, like he was miles away, but they could see it, how you explained it now. You know, so I'm thinking you were there. <laughs> yeah, so in this book they are explaining that he was miles away, but they felt he's here already. There were m- m- know, millions of people, lots of people. They were not even close, but they could still hear him, what he is talking. You know, they could feel him. So, like you explained, also these persons explained their, uh, how to say, uh, their meeting with Koran. And this meeting was not like one in front of the other. It was maybe one mile away. But they could feel him like he is with them. So Gina Dared is saying, like I remember, Krishna waiting Kunja. <coughs> and Radhika is appearing very far away. Radhika's golden effulgence. And Moha could understand. Oh, Radhika's coming. So similarly, Goranga Mahaprabhu will come. Even very far place, all the effusions is coming. And also, Radhika's lotus feet, or even lotus connection, lotus hand, this nail, this comes from nail. Golden effulgence. This effulgence is not like sun. Sunshine sometimes hot in our skin, hot eye. Too hot, we are disturbing. But the radical effulgence from Rodeno, its name is like a moon shine. Mm-hmm. Very soft, very cooling, and full of love to satisfy all the desire of Krishna. Not only Krishna, and all living. <laughs> so just I remember in the Sindhaji was Yadika Deco. Although Radha's love <coughs> is pure, like a mirror, its purity increases at every moment. My sweetness also has no room for expansion, yet it shines before that mirror in newer and newer beauty. So here Krishna is admitting that he is limited by Shivati Radhika makes a more unlimited experience of love. Limited means actually it feels like, you know, it's already complete. 
Everything is already complete. I feel everything. I know everything. I I serve also the feelings and desires of other living entities. Krishna, he feels it's already so complete. But when Shimati Radhika is in front of me and feeling her love, I feel again. I feel incomplete. I feel something is missing. I am the one who's not missing anything. I'm satisfied in myself. By the reflection of her love, I feel something is missing. At the moment, I really don't know what is missing. I just feel that something is missing because I feel her and I feel that her love and her realizations about our love or my love are so much unlimited that I feel attracted to this new unlimited feelings of her. She is showing that and it makes me very, very eager. That is his feeling when he says, the mirror, seeing into the mirror, I see myself because she loves me, right? But I feel that she, she loves something inside of me that even I don't know. So that's why the Holy sometimes say, and I also like this word, word or a comparison, that Radha and Krishna are constantly giving each other initiations and new realizations about their personal their relationship and love. And Mahaprabhu is that unlimited combination of them together. And that's why when we come closer to that desire to serve <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the mercy of Nidai, when we come into this age of Kali that is so blessed, we have taken birth here now in such a great chance to serve that intimate relationship of Radha Mohan that is ever increasing and that makes all living entities like Sudhiri was so nicely saying so eager and it's a natural process but how it is possible only by listening because the eagerness is not something that comes you know, like it is, it is increasing. We hear about Chaitanya, we hear about Nityananda's mercy, but the mind is always blocked with many old things. So, like Krishna needs the mirror of Srimati Radhika to feel this sweetness. So, so we need the mirror of those devotees like our Guruji and all the beautiful Vaishnavas we have here. Because when we look in these mirrors, then I also feel there is something that I want to experience, I need to find out. In this bhakti it is not that, oh, I write and read in the books and now it's done, I know it all. Now this mirror of the Vaishnavas, love is always increasing and always fresh. We are such a lucky crew, we are together, so many Vaishnavas on the festival. It's a big chance to look in the mirror. <laughs> so I would like just 
to continue Sumitiji's flow <coughs> about this mirror because it comes to me it is so nice example which Krishna is using the mirror so he looks in all radical superiors and he sees himself in Radhika's eyes, he sees his, her feelings to himself. In Radhika's hair, brain, he sees Radhika's all emotions which are coming from her heart. In Radhika's gestures, he sees desire to give him pleasure. In Radhika's footwork, he sees how she is eager to give him a pleasure because she knows that he wants to put this lack on his chest. He sees. And because he is seeing with all his senses, not only with the eyes, he is comparing Radhika with the mirror, most pure mirror, because Radhika's heart is the most pure mirror. And when once someone has a, such kind of pure, pure, pure heart, then everything what he is doing, everything what he is thinking, everything what he is feeling, is actually visible in all his or her appearance. And for that, we need mercy of those persons, like Sunitiji says, who already have this kind of mirror of the heart. So that the rays from their mirror, their love for Shimatiradika, or Yuga Lakishwa be reflected in our hearts. And when this reflection comes in our hearts, then our hearts will become very soon also the mirror of the world. So, thank you. This is meditation for Nama Rupa. Buddha and Krishna is meditating on Radhika's form, Radhika's qualities. So we can learn it from Radhika's maidservants who are very confident. They are revealing very, very confidential <laughs> truths which are not revealed. In before before ages or years. Very confidential because they are very emotional and very deep. Maybe so. there is no connection. <coughs> Although Radha's love is pure like a bear. Its purity increases at every moment. My sweetness also has no room for expansion. Yet it shines before that mirror in newer and newer beauty. There is constant competition between my sweetness in the mirror of Radha's love. <coughs> they both go on increasing, but neither knows defeat. <coughs> so I want to just give a little picture that came to me. Because they have been nervous. And you know, sometimes there's this room full of mirrors. And when you go into the room full of mirrors, you're completely bewildered. 
And so Radha and Krishna, they are mirroring each other's love. And like Mahabhas and Masatma Dhamma, love in general, their forms, and how they feel when they look at each other. So that happens when they become each other's mirrors. They become so bewildered. Because at one point it seems to be the ocean of unlimited possibilities and exchanges of them. And that's why it happens when they look at each other. At one point they don't know anyone. Is it you or is it me? <laughs> or are you me? <laughs> Or am I you? <laughs> Complete madness in love. <laughs> and that's what Tanya comes to be, to share. A treasure chest. He helps us to come out of our downer vibrations. I am one dimension. No. You're a multi dimensional entity also. And if you can revive it, you can remember it, I help you. And then also, we have a chance now to serve this beautiful, beautiful divine couple. And we get this and this and we need our help. They are so merciful that they need our help. And the Nandamandri is so merciful that she must be the entrance to the beautiful divine confusion ever increasing. There is constant competition between my sweetness and the mirror of Radha's love. They both go on increasing, but neither knows defeat. My sweetness is always newer and newer. Devotees taste it according to their own respective love. If I see my sweetness in a mirror, I am tempted to taste it, but never, nevertheless, I cannot. If I deliberate on a way to taste it, I find that I hanker for the position of Radhika. This is greedy Krishna. This is very greedy Krishna. He wants to become Radhika's heart. He wants to enter in his heart. He wants to plunder in her heart. <laughs> so this is greediness of him. He's trying to be a little bit humble in the beginning. But he's, he's trying. But now he's very eager. I cannot resist. I have to have it. I have to become that heart. By any means, this. By any means. So this is a grief. She's, he is teaching us. It's okay. This is a theory, you know. And this is a feeling also, but you need a greed to get it. But he's also humble because he's giving up his position. 
that so he finds it. Because he gave his eyes to the Because he gave up this position, he can feel urge and greed to become Radhika's. Otherwise, he will never manifest, in his heart will never be manifested such kind of greed to become Radhika's heart if he just maintain his position of God. But and it's always easier to give, to give up something if you're getting something better. I didn't know that just that. Also, it's always tricky. Yes. Don't believe it. All in his If I deliberate on a way to taste it, I find that I hanker for the position of Radhika. Who manifests an abundance of sweetness greater than mine? Him being humble. Yeah. Yes. Who manifests an abundance of sweetness greater than mine, which has never been experienced before, and which causes wonder to all? Alas, I myself. My mind bewildered upon seeing this beauty, impetuously desire to enjoy it like Shimrati Radharani. I was just. <coughs> I was just uh, feeling that wonderful picture that you gave us, Janana Maharaj. <laughs> Krishna is making the gopis let them fall all covers of you know shyness so that he can give them spiritual bodies and relation like Rudik of consent in this Mia of stealing the clothes and he is giving this Svaru actually He's giving the soul body that is cleaning behind that. And I was just feeling as you were reading it. Because this relationship between Radha and Roma is so intimate, so confidential. But as Goranga, together with Nita, they also lift up their arms. They are also standing there in their very vulnerable, you know, showing their deepest, deepest, most confidential relationships. <laughs> and they are like saying, we are not hiding any from anything from you anymore. No. Will you not also open your hearts to us? Will you come and help us? Without shame, without fear. They are opening their arms and showing their most sweetest and vulnerable hearts and relation that the world has not heard or felt before. They are also so helpless, also showing all what makes them crazy and cry all the time. Just to help us also to come in that pure position. <laughs> the 
the beauty of Krishna has one natural strength. It thrills the hearts of all men and women beginning with Lord Krishna himself. All minds are attracted by hearing his sweet voice and flute or by seeing his beauty. Even Lord Krishna himself makes efforts to taste that sweetness. The thirst of one who always drinks the nectar of that sweetness is never satisfied. <coughs> From this example, this words we can this is the proof that this words Majari are very good. Mm. Because only Majari can say Krishna is making an endeavor to take his own sweetness. Mm. From no other bhavas it's not possible. So this is the proof that Krishna does courage. Could you read again this lesson? The thirst of one who always drinks the nectar of that sweetness is never satisfied. Rather, that thirst increases constantly. All minds are attracted by hearing his sweet voice and flute, or by seeing his beauty. Even Lord Krishna himself makes efforts to taste that sweetness. He is making, although he is unlimited, still he makes effort to taste his own sweetness. And for this reason he has to become to spontaneously, without effort, taste his sweetness. And this is why this sweetness is a more subtle desire than just desire to feel perfect. And only Manjaris can write this kind of beautiful words that he is making the devil to approach the man, to taste the spirit. Why? <coughs> 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 Because he is not a doer, he is a viewer. And uh, he can he could feel not only Radhika's feeling, also Mohan. And also this manjari is very amazing. If someone who is very sweet, we want to taste. So manjari is not directly tasting. Indirectly tasting. <laughs> but that indirect tasting is more tasteful. Mm. That is manjari. Mm. So nice this meditation. Mm. All your mantras can reveal that 
generous Radha and Mohan in moments when they are so in need of help because of that confusion and that unlimited sweetness. And they see and they have witnessed when Krishna faints. And also nice meditation. He is, he, is, he is not happy when he's fainting. <laughs> he's losing it. <laughs> and Radhika is like waiting for him to wake up again and continue. <laughs> so also, he needs her strength to feel more. <laughs> thirst of one who always drinks the nectar of that sweetness is never satisfied. Rather, that thirst increases constantly. Such a person, being unsatisfied, begins to blaspheme Lord Brahma, saying that he does not know the art of creating well. It is simply inexperienced. He has not given millions of eyes to see the beauty of Krishna. He has given only two eyes even those eyes blink. <laughs> How then shall I see the lovely face of Krishna? The gopi said, O oh Krishna, when you go to the forest during the day, and we do not see your sweet face which is surrounded by beautiful curling hair half a second becomes as long as an entire age for us And we consider the Creator <clears throat> who has put eyelids on the eye we use for seeing you to be simply a fool. The gopis saw their beloved Krishna <laughs> at Kuru Setra Kuru Setra after a long separation they secured and embraced him in their hearts through their eyes and they attained a joy so intense that not even perfect yogis can attain it. The gopis cursed the Creator for creating eyelids that interfered with their vision. There is no consummation for the eyes other than the sight of Krishna. Whoever sees him 
is most fortunate indeed. <coughs> the gopi said, Oh, friends, those eyes that see the beautiful faces of the sons of Maharaja Nanda are certainly fortunate. As these two sons enter the forest, surrounded by their friends, driving the cows before them, <coughs> they hold their flutes to their mouths <coughs> and glance lovingly upon the residents of Vrindavana. For those who have eyes, we think there is no greater object of vision. The woman, woman of Mathura said, What austerities must the gopis have performed? With their eyes, they always drink the nectar of the form of Lord Krishna, which is the essence of loveliness. And is not to be equaled or surpassed. That loveliness is the only abode of beauty, fame, and opulence. It is self perfect, ever fresh and extremely rare. The sweetness of Lord Krishna is unprecedented and its strength is also unprecedented. Simply by one's hearing of such beauty, the mind becomes unsteady. Lord Krishna's own beauty attracts Lord Krishna himself. But because he cannot fully enjoy it, his mind remains full of sorrow. This is a description of his second desire. Now, please listen as I describe the third. This conclusion of rasa is extremely deep. Only Svarupa Damodara knows much about it. Anyone else who claims to know it 
must have heard it from him. For he was the most intimate companion of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhu. The love of the gopis is called Ruga Bhava. It is pure and spotless. It is not at any time lust. The pure love of the gopis has become celebrated by the name lust. The dear devotees of the Lord, headed by Shri Uddhava, desire to taste that love. Lust and love have different characteristics. Just as iron and gold have different natures, is also opening the key for us. What is the difference between love and lust? <coughs> this is important because in this world, in this material bodies, we often have been used to thinking and feeling what is in how can I survive how can I be rich and beautiful how can I be learned how can I be whatever the living entity desires and that's why we are here, we have desires, we wanted to experience that. But in the realm of divine love, it is the other way around. How can I make you happy? What do you mean? What is your desire? How can I fulfill? or help you with your desires. And that's the concept of giving. So when we hear the stories of Radha and Mohan's love, or even how the gopis love Krishna, it's important to have some background. I would pain to be because all the gopis, these are the moonies, the rishis, who had desire to serve Krishna as gopis, as selfless, feminine energies or personalities. They have been meditating on Krishna. They wanted to serve them, even when they were rishis and moonies. Krishna said, hey, in this and that age, I will help you fulfill your desires. And when they had this opportunity, they became more and more uh, purified. Also, they could take part in the Leela when Krishna was on this planet. They can also go in the Nitya Leela at one time. But it all happens by the mercy of Srimati Radhika. Also for them. Because she is the one that gives any soul the possibility 
philosophical shape. And she is the one that has no other desire. So for us, as souls with independent desires, for my own, my so-called own happiness, what I think I am, it is important to understand that all these souls They have been praying to serve Krishna. And they got the result. And they were sadhana siddhas. They did a lot of meditating, chanting, a lot of spiritual In this age of Kali Yuga, where we are now taking birth in these bodies, We don't have the possibility and qualifications like the old rishis and munis. They were meditating for ten thousands of years. We are now in bodies that will only last maximum 80, 90, 100 years. Our body, this body. So is it not merciful that just now we have a chance to get this mercy of Chaitanya to come at this time to lift us up in such a short way? This is unbelievable. And not only is, is that we cannot meditate for 10,000 years, But we don't even know how to meditate, right? <laughs> we are always... <laughs> <laughs> But Nityananda is so merciful, you know? He takes those kind of persons, like me, and offers them to Shimati. <laughs> Those who have no time, not long life, no good qualities, they have the chance to become servants of Shema Isn't that amazing? That's like a really big miracle. No? <laughs> And that's why they That is explained that we need to understand the difference of this karma and prema. It can only happen if we fully give up our false identity. If I at least try it, I cannot do it. I have tried long well enough, but I cannot. But by the help and mercy of Ruthie, who is representative of Ruthie, I have a chance. They have some feelings for this very poor baby. Tries to run all the time, but it's falling down again. That is the mercy that comes along with Krishna's confidential desires and Radhika's limitedly merciful heart. Because Sri Matiradika's love is such that it's so overwhelming that when they come together in that form, it spills over. <laughs> it spills over and Nityananda is distributing this spilled over So I feel just how lucky we are today. 
that really we are the, I am the most um, unworthy, unqualified and very much um, I'm so sink in this material consciousness. It's so difficult to do it for myself. I need the help of those who are crying constantly because they are always feeling it's all everywhere is rather Everywhere is mercy of mine. So we are today also lucky that we are in association of all these special Vaishnavas who have these feelings and, you know, share these feelings. And Gurudev is giving us a chance and is also so generous today. Today is the most generous day of the day. But there is also a really beauty. It is only a question of mercy. Yes. It's, it's such it's such a beauty <laughs> that we have to receive it. Mm -hmm. Only bend our knees. Begging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Constantly. Yes. Not only today. When I go home, I get again in the ocean of ignorance. <laughs> I beg her that this will keep in my heart. This is also worthy, that always I can remember that. And feel in that vibration. Begging is good, crying is good. But forgetfulness is my biggest mystery. Again, I become like a pig in a stream. I say this about myself, not to I. Again, I feel all this material work is really something so uncomfortable. <laughs> I will live forever. I will talk. But no, this intensity that Loba, that Krishna has, how to also take it to me, and to become intensively eager to always remember this mercy, always beg them, always be in this position of receive. I just pray for, for myself today. It's, it's a feeling that I'm also blessed that I can feel it. That Shimadhi Radhika's mercy is bigger than that Krishna's sweetness. You know, he is very sweet, yes. In the mirror of her love, even he is astonished. And he wants to steal her feelings because there is something that she does not have. Lust and love have different characteristics. Just as iron and gold have different natures. The desire to gratify one's own senses is kama, lust. But the desire to please the senses of Lord Krishna is prema, love. The object of lust is only the enjoyment of one's own senses. But love caters to the enjoyment of Lord Krishna and thus it is very powerful. <clears throat> Social customs, scriptural injunctions, bodily demands, 
fructive action. Shyness, patience, bodily pleasures, self gratification, and the path of Varnasrama Dharma, which is difficult to give up. The gopis have forsaken all of these. This is interesting. If you heard the whole list, it's not just self gratification, even spiritual injunctions. Wow, Varnashrama Dharma, everything goes in that category. What we need to yeah, what we need to give up? Patience. And yeah, even shyness, even patience. Patience. Yeah. All was put in the same group. This is so interesting. We were teach many times. Oh we need to accept scriptural injunctions. Huh? Here they're showing they don't care anymore about that. Mm-hmm. They just care for Krishna in this case. Yeah? So when our, when our desire for Radhika mm-hmm. becomes comes above everything. Mm-hmm. Even Shastra. Mm-hmm. Then that's that. Mm-hmm. You know. We are not patient. What patience? Mm-hmm. We are not patient. Mm-hmm. Of course, Radhika acts and Krishna in their own time. But we are not patient. We are asking, give, give. Mm-hmm. You know, give Kripa. Mm-hmm. We want Kripa. Mm-hmm. Now. Mm-hmm. Not someday. Now we want. Mm-hmm. Why wait? <laughs> you know? As uh, Suniti was talking, now we have shorter lives. No. Why wait? There is no time to wait. No. So, this is a nice point that all this is in the same category. Meaning that if you want to reach Radhika. Friend. You need to go above all this. Maybe it's also so important because we have such a short time. Mm-hmm. Because if we imagine, or I imagine some yogis or moonies, they live in the jungle for many thousands of years in caves and in that time which is, seems to be unlimited in our imagination they give up all external identities and they go deep in the meditations and they you know make their own experiences and become detached but here we are I am in this kind of yoga, where we have no so much abilities to go in meditation, always doing, 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 I feel, and even sometimes I feel now because I'm also so lucky I have been in association of for 40 years in this lifetime, but still discovering something, still, I want to be good to Bhutti, I want to be good temple servant, so many I want to be. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
you know, all this strange food of zones up. Mm -hmm. Just remember, I, I'm so lucky I come back to Vietnam because this winter was so comfortable, I can tell you. It was so comfortable for me. Really? I eat so much, I become fat. And then, you know, so many things. I cannot even, I don't want to expose this stupidity in front of Radha Mohan. They know. Even after 40 years, stupid like it. So why? Because, you know, even knowing so many things, not being completely absorbed. That's only my, now I'm just beating myself. And on these days also, I can do that. I can cry that I want more eagerness and become really a true dasi. Not only by my words. I have learned it. That is the difference between the prema and the karma. Even in devotee circles, we can be very happy externally. Mm -hmm. Culture. Yeah, it's like a culture, it's like a habit. Religious. It's a religious, it's a positive life. We are the good people. <laughs> but in my heart, I know where I am, if I'm honest. I still like to eat like a pig. Sorry. <laughs> but I felt like this is winter. <laughs> Why? Because there's no higher taste. I have to stuff my face all the time. I want to eat this devotion more. Here in Vrindavan, this prasad is all Radha Mohan's prasad. So, just look, I check myself that I feel that um, me time, please, good, it help me to come out of this comfort zone of mind and senses that I can fill my heart with the real feelings, that I can go deep. I don't want to swim, I want to die. Please, look me in my I know this is not for you. We need each other's help. Yeah, I understand this. <laughs> in, in this context that, yeah, we do mistakes. And this is normal. Let's not fool ourselves. This is normal. You know, we are like children who are learning to walk. In this case, to die. You know. And child falls. But what child does? Stands up. And tries again. Does child ever give up? No. He tries and tries and still finally learns to walk. So, yeah. In one way I understand. We try sometimes beat ourselves. Because we failed or we moved in the, in the other direction. But also, we should be kind to ourselves and kindly uh, turn our heart. Embrace ourselves. Yes. We have responsibility yeah. to ourselves. But, but in a way, not, not use a stick, but love to turn ourselves back to Radhika. We should always, you know, we, we are talking about love, talking about bhakti, but we should learn how to act from the position of love. Not just towards but others, to but towards ourselves. Yes. Mm. You know, of course, maybe you'll feel angry, why I did this, why I went this way, you know. 
But the point is, we need to recognize it and then turn to, with love. You know, use the love to turn ourselves. Okay, I understand. I'm learning. I'm learning. I will fall. I will hurt my knees. You know? But I will again stand up. Yeah, it's painful. It is painful. But I will continue. I will stand up and kneel. Until one day, I will learn how to die and get the jewels from the water. You know? So, when you were talking, I, I immediately felt sorry, you know, say beating up. Oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's the feeling, yourself, you know, right? there are many yeah. feelings. I understand. I, it's not the only feeling. I understand. Sometimes I also start like that, angry on myself. But, but in the end, uh, we, we cannot help ourselves if we stay in that condition to be that, of course. Yes. Only, only love can turn us towards love. Yes. We need bhakti to go to Bhakti, mm -hmm. you know, so that's what I mean. Thank you for your mercy. Yeah. Now Radha Mohan is calling us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we go with Bhakti to get Bhakti. Yeah. <laughs>